Hey guys, I'm a little late getting started this morning. Sorry about that. I'm adjusting the camera. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Molly. Okay, I just got distracted doing other stuff this morning. You know, it's one of those hey squirrel situations. All right, let's see. Let's turn the sound off. All right, let's see. Let's turn the sound off. I don't need to hear myself twice. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least I'm only three minutes late. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I was actually working on a life book page and I got distracted. How is everybody today? Hello, Lisa. So today we're going to work on some flowers that was next in your guys uh, on your wish list for um, things that you want to um, work on. Better late than never. Yeah, thanks, Erin. Yeah, I mean, you know, at least I remembered, right? <laughs> I do have anxiety disorder, so me forgetting something is not like that's a new surprising thing. Those of you who don't know, by the way. Hey, everybody. How are you? So we're going to work on some flowers this morning. Get my watercolors wet because I haven't done that yet. At least my water's clean. Um, when I was cleaning and going through some stuff, hey, how are you, Jerry? I found these two little bookmarks in a pile of um, things that I did a while back. Um, and I think, good morning. I think I um, showed these on YouTube, I think. But anyway, these are two examples of different ways to do flowers. And I thought we would work on something like this today. Um, I really like doing these types of flowers. They're a lot of fun. Watercolor Wednesday, yeah. So instead of starting off with a regular pencil and an eraser, we're going to put those aside. We're going to still do a sketch, but I'm going to use a water-soluble pencil. So you can use any kind of water-soluble pencil that you have. I actually even have some Crayola watercolor pencils, which actually these aren't bad. Um, Especially for something like doing an undersketch. I actually really like the Crayola pencils. Good morning, Michelle. Um, so if you don't have a lot of money to spend on supplies, think about just going over and um, go to, you know, your local big box retailer and look for the Crayola watercolor markers. I think they came in a set of 12. I got mine at Joann's with a coupon, um, but they're not bad. Um, I, my preference for brands is either Derwent or Prima watercolor pencils. Uh, I have Derwent watercolor and Derwent ink tents. I like them very much. We're gonna paint flowers this morning. I did see that comment. So the first thing we're gonna do is our under sketch. Now I always start with a color that's much lighter than what I intend to use in um, my flowers. I should probably go get my reading glasses. Hold on. Okay, because I'm not a young anymore, so I can't read the little print. Okay, so this is a Derwent Ink Tense. This is Red Violet. Um, this is a Crayola Violet, but it's pretty dark. So if you have the Crayola, I would say go with like a pink, something that's really light. If you have like a Crayola watercolor marker or something like that, something that's really light. I think this is too dark. Um, I'm going to do my, my flowers in... No, and we're not going to use a reference photo. <laughs> I know that's going to drive some of you crazy. So this is a Derwent Intense Red Violet. You could go with a light pink. You could go with a light blue. And I'm going to start out by just putting some circles. Um, if we're using any kind of a reference, it's this bookmark here that I, this one. So I'm going to start out by putting some circles on my page in this pencil. And that's representing my flower centers. And I always put at least three. I like odd numbers on a, on a composition. I think it's more interesting than even numbers. I also almost never um, put every, anything smack in the middle. And yeah, my paper is completely dry. This is the same um, watercolor paper we've been using this is the same pad of paper the what is it 400 series i keep having to look yeah for strathmore 400 series 140 pound watercolor paper and i've got my daniel smith paints out next to me next to my arm 
And it's always interesting if you do, you know, do one, think about doing one, like, going off the page. This is just an under sketch. So we've got our three circles, and we're going to come back and we're going to start to put in a kind of a petally shape. We're not going to have it go all the way to meet the center. Leave a little bit of a gap. Yeah, this is a water-soluble pencil. So when all is said and done, you're not going to have any pencil lines. Remember that in nature, things aren't even and perfect. They are um, imperfect and irregular, and that makes them more interesting. Whether you're doing... I don't know who that is. Whether you're doing um, trees or grass or flowers or... And I guess we should start off the broadcast by warning the, the trolls and the weird people. You know, if you just, you're going to get blocked right away. So enough with the nasty messages and the wanting to see my boobs or whatever. <laughs> We're here to watercolor. We're not here to do that. So Okay, so you're going to end up with something that looks like that. And this is exactly how I did this. So I'll hold it up a little bit. Let's see. There we go. Maybe, maybe. Okay. So we're going to do another one. Exactly. Go find somewhere else to be nasty. This is for art. Okay, so now we're going to do the, this next one, and what's going to happen is our flowers are going to end up overlapping, but that's okay. We want that, and that's how I did this one. We just have to decide how we're going, whether this one is going to be on top or this one is going to be on top, and which one's going to be underneath. And I think I want this one to be underneath, so I'm going to draw my petal going this way. Okay, I don't know what that means either. And then we've got, so we have one petal that's fully underneath the other flower and one petal that's going to be partially underneath and partially running off the page. That makes for an inter interesting composition. And if you make any mistakes with your pencil, remember this is water soluble, so doesn't matter. It's fine. Cool. I don't think so, Jerry. I think that you guys can block viewers for me, too. All right. So now I'm going to draw this last one. Now this one's partially going off the page, so I think that what I'm going to do is plan out three petals. I think that's going to work for me. I have been posting, um, I don't know, maybe somebody else can tell you. I have no idea. I think you just hit on their name. You just like tap on their name and a block comes up. A thing to block them comes up. But I'm not sure. So maybe somebody else can answer that. So I, I was going to say, I've been putting digital copies of some of these Watercolor Wednesday um, paintings up in my Etsy shop for those of you who would like to get a copy of it and maybe even you can use it as a reference photo. You can download it. Um, they're inexpensive and it'll help keep me funded so I can keep doing the free lessons for you guys. Alright, so when all is said and done you're going to end up with something that looks like that. And here we go, are you ready? Alright, so I of course like really I like purple so we're gonna do these in purple because I really love the way these turned out uh, I'm gonna start out with let's see 
we're going to go pale to lighter, right? So I actually think I'm going to start with um, a really light, this is cobalt blue violet, it, which is really blue, but we're going to add a lot of water to it. We're going to just use a little bit because we're working lighter to darker, right? And again, the paper is still dry. And see how the pencil is blending. It's dissolving and mixing with the paint. I'm using a pretty big brush and a lot of water. Lay some color on, spread it around a bit. We're not looking to really fill the whole puddle in. I'm gonna lift some up so we have some varying shades and tones. There we go. And then we'll keep going. And we're gonna do the whole flower that way. No, you can use any color, whatever color you decide. If you decide you want your flowers mostly red, start out with a very light pink and work your way darker. And as we go, we're gonna talk about colors that you can use to define your flower shape and to use them to indicate lightness and brightness and um, shadow. Think about using the unexpected. In fact, violet, if you want to use violet for your flower, I mean, if you want to use um, another color for your flower, violet's a good shadow color. That's what I meant to say. I honestly have had all my coffee this morning, but I just, I don't feel like it. I feel, it's one of those days where I feel like I'm needing more coffee. Maybe because I'm stressed out because my daughter's car broke down again. She's got my car today. I hate I hate her Volkswagen bug, I swear to God. It's always in the shop. Now see how that, you know, depending on how much of the blue violet I have on there and how much it's mixing with the pencil, I'm getting different colors, different shades. We're okay with it. This kind way of doing these messy flowers is all about happy accidents. Yeah, I know. I hate I hate her car. But you know what? If you are in my group on Facebook, I am going to just use it as a lesson in um, I can't talk and paint at the same time this morning. A, a lesson in um, you know how to work with a happy accident, and you know I have other things to do like catch up on life book and be here with you guys today. Um, and maybe it's not such a bad thing that I'm Carla's today. And I kind of I kind of told her that. I said, just take my car, it'd be easier than me driving you around. Okay, so just work your way around the flower. And don't worry about if you get, you know, a little bit of splattering here and there. It just makes your painting more interesting. And this is a practice anyway. We're do we're learning. Of course, if it turns out well and you really like it. Think about scanning your um, artwork and take making a copy of it that you can use as collage paper in future works, um, that you can print on bookmarks or note cards. Thank you for all the hearts. Now that this appears dry a little bit, and this one here too. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, she said, can you drop me off at school mom tomorrow? I don't have a car. I said, you know, I have an appointment with some friends I need to be at at about the same time you need to be at school. So why don't you just take my car? <laughs> just don't, you know, hit anything with it. <laughs> Dang it up. All right. So we're going to work our way around. And take some time and just, instead of just doing one whole flower and then doing the next whole flower, do the one color over all your flowers because it gives this one these this one time to dry while you're working down here and then we can come in with the next color without having to resort to the heat gun. Nope, yeah, no problem, Carol. You know that I will post this on to YouTube.
we're using our Daniel Smith watercolors again this morning, which is one of my favorites. You all know that. And I'm using the Cobalt Blue Violet, although on my color card, I think I spelled it wrong. Which would be no surprise because my spelling is not the best. Look at that. That's a little bit of pigment, but that's mostly the um, watercolor pencil has that red in it. Okay. So now we're going to go back up to the top one and now we're going to start to go darker. And I usually always work on my outside petals first. Don't you love the way the pencil just starts to dissolve in the paint and it changes the color and it mixes and blends? And I love that about this technique. Um, I always start with the petals first and get them the way that I want. And then I work on the centers. Um, so we're going to keep doing that. And I am going to bring in, before we get too far, I'm, I'm going to bring in something to... Um, I'm going to use this color. This is New Gamboge. And we're going to, um, you know, my palette's kind of messy. <laughs> I need to clean it. Okay. So I'm going to take it here and I'm mixing it with a bunch of water. And I'm just splattering it on. Today I'm doing this. I'm not wearing a white top like I was yesterday when I did this and got white. I got, uh, sepia colored paint all over my white shirt. So water soluble, same, yeah, same as watercolor. And so now I'm going to just come in with some water and I'm going to take some of these splatters and spread them out a little bit. And this will make your painting, you know, look sun kissed, give it some life and some light. And that's what you want. Now, because we have yellow and violet on here, this yellowy orange color, before you add any more, you want to prevent this yellow orangey color from mixing too much more with the violets I'm going to be adding on here because you'll just get brown. So we're going to have to break out the heat gun. And basically, I just dry it with the heat gun until it's not shiny anymore, which is why I tilt the paper. You can blow on it or use a straw. Yeah. You can use an old hair dryer to do this. I have I use my heat embossing tool. It's pretty much the only thing I use this for. Oh, congratulations on the puppies. Thank you. <laughs> I like brown. Brown has its place, Cheryl. It's okay. <laughs> If you're uncomfortable with the painting process and you're uncomfortable with what you're doing, then you look at this and go, holy crap, that looks like a giant mess. Just trust your instincts and keep watercolors like any other paint. Keep adding your layers and your marks and it's going to improve the more you do that. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> so now I'm going to come in with something that's a little bit more pink. I have this color called Rose of Ultramarine, which I just love, which is a really red uh, purple. And I'm not going to water it down too much. A little bit. And we're going to start by going into our petals. Yeah, we're going to start by going into our petals, you know, around the parts of the petal 
that would be darker where the shadows would be. Lay your color in and then you can just use water to blend it with the other colors that are around it. Don't go too far with the color before you get back in with the water because this is a color that will stain. And then just some, a damp brush. I'm just blotting it off on my rag so that it's damp, but it's really, it's just picking up some of the pigment and water and it's not laying any more down. It's lifting. Okay. And we'll keep doing that all the way around. So I don't always know, but my general rule for painting with watercolor is that the darker the color is, the more it's probably going to stain. And your artist watercolors tend to stain more than your um, inexpensive student grade or craft grade watercolors do. The other thing you should be aware of is, you know, there's nothing wrong with... No, I didn't stamp first. I sketched it first with a watercolor pencil. Um, there's nothing wrong with starting with a set of inexpensive watercolor paints like Crayola, if that's all you can afford. Just be aware that if you really like the painting, I advise that you scan it with your computer um, while it's fresh. Uh, because I know, all those of you with kids also know, you know, your kids do little drawings and paintings for you when they're little. By the time they're grown ups, those paintings are a lot less bright and or are completely gray because all of those colors, those colors have no light, light fastness to them. So, you know, with time and with age and exposure to the, you know, air, those colors turn gray or they just fade out completely. So, um, and artist grade watercolors don't do that. But for just for practicing and playing, there's nothing wrong with getting started with just, you know, Crayola. I, I, that's all I had to begin with. So I sketched out our shapes um, with um, a watercolor pencil. No, sealer won't stop them from fading. Not with the, um, in, especially the kids like Crayola paints. Unfortunately. So now you're starting to get some really great tones. Now before I move to the next flower, I'm going to take some of the same color and I'm going to add it in a few places. I'm straight out of the half pan, not mixed with any water or anything. So it's really dark and I'm going to add it in a few places around the edges, outer edges of our petals. And then I'm going to come in with my brush with just water on it. I blotted it off first so it's not too too wet and I'm going to add the water towards the center of the flower so the color will blend and bloom towards the middle of the flower. If you post a comment and I, I miss it, um, I'll try to let you know, post it again. Loving, Yeah, I love, I have always loved the uncontrolled look of watercolor and I have not ever um, been a painter that wants to control a lot where the color goes. I love working with the splatters and the splotches and the uncontrolled, you know, nature of watercolor and making it into something that's really pretty. That's not for everybody, but that's definitely for me. Okay, so I'm going to just work my way around.
Yeah, it, um, the other thing with the artist watercolors, the um, especially the Daniel Smiths, but also like the Schmink and those kind of brands, is that they really are very strongly pigmented. So a little bit of them goes a really long way. Whereas with some of the others, um, you know, to get the same bright, vibrant colors, you have to use more paint. I do have watercolor sample kits in my Etsy shop as of a couple of days ago. And you can get a selection of eight of my favorite colors and brands um, with a few pieces of watercolor paper. And there's a 20% off coupon. Um, I think it's GBA Fall 20. You have to pay, you have to buy $10, a minimum of $10 at the Etsy, in my Etsy shop. So now we're going back in like we did with the other one. Yeah, and I tried to, you know, I have lots of favorite colors, but I tried to pick eight colors that would complement, not only complement whatever you guys already may have, but um, that by themselves would be an interesting um, travel palette. They're not exactly primary colors, but they would be interesting. So I'm really wanting to add a little bit of this dark color right here, so we're going to do that. Now this purple is very warm because it's so red. So when I start coming in with some other colors, I need to really do a cooler color. I almost lost control of my paintbrush there for a second. <laughs> my arthritis has been acting up like crazy. No color rules. <laughs> Just play and experiment. That's the best way to learn about color rules and what you find that is going to work for you and what isn't, is to just play and experiment. Of course, you should, if you want to get serious into painting, you should probably learn something about color theory. And, you know, if you were on my Monday with Deco Art last week, where we did um, color mixing, you know, that's an exercise that should be done with acrylic paint and watercolor. You should, you know, the best way to learn about what colors you like to mix and which ones you don't is to mix them. Um, the best way to learn about making mud is to make mud. So, um, yeah, that's something you should all do. See, I waited a little too long there. See, we have this line here. So, I'm going to go in and try to cover it. Yeah, yeah, you know, Cheryl, I got to give you some credit for all that canning. I used to do all that canning and make my own pickles and um, everything. I missed the YouTube comment. Can you please post that again? I looked up and it was already fading. Yeah, it's time consuming doing canning. We used to make our own tomato sauce and can it, not freeze it, can it. Um, now I still do some of that, but I just put it in the freezer. <laughs> and I don't make as much of it as I used to. You know, it's just my husband and I now, so I don't have any grandchildren, at least not yet. So, so there we go. That's already looking interesting, right? All right. So now we're going to come in with a cooler color, and I have quadrochrome purple. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, it is up on YouTube. See, that's the that's the comment that I missed. Um, it is up on YouTube. Um, all of the... Uh, I'm going to mix some more of that blue-violet into the quadrochrome purple. Um, all of the Periscope videos start out with... Um, the title says, Recorded Live on Periscope. So look for the one that says, Monday with Deco Art, and it should say color blending or color mixing, something like that. So now we're going to continue, and we're going to come up here because this one's dry. I'm 
You are welcome. And basically, if you missed the um, Monday with Deco Art video, I do recommend you watch it. But basically, what you should do is you should make a chart and blend all of your colors with all of your colors. So you blend, blend like your, say, yellow, what is this, Hansa Yellow Medium, with every single other color in your palette to see what happens. And make yourself a chart. So this is a much cooler color than the one we just put on. And you don't necessarily need to put it everywhere, but you want to put it in those places where the shadows would be more prominent. And remember, if our edges um, lighter, what Cheryl? So I'm going to put this in. Oh, it's not um, lighter. It, it's about the same tone shade. It's just cool. It's a cooler color because it has less red in it than the other one. It's more blue. And this is the watered down version because I added I added a lot of water to it, like I did initially with the um, Rose of Ultramarine. So I'm going to take a little bit of this color and I'm going to add it to my centers, which we've kind of ignored up until now. All right. Yes, so when I paint... Um, and this is something I do with both watercolor and acrylic is I tend to think of my colors as warm colors and cool. And this will give us a minute to dry. So this is a good thing to talk about. So when you look at your color chart, this is the color key that goes with this watercolor set. Um, if you look at it and you think of it less as a color and more as a temperature and you look at your chart, which colors look hotter, which ones look cooler. So all of your yellows, most of your reds, um, they and some of your greens, they look warmer than, say, the blues and, of course, the um, browns and the sepia. Um, but also, too, when you're just talking even about reds, like the two reds here, the quidocridone red looks much warmer than the quin magenta, which has a little bit of blue in it. Um, the if you look at the greens these are both green but the sap green looks much warmer than the cascade green so think about your colors in the um, respect of temperature and which ones will suggest warmth or or coolness or darkness to the viewer of your painting that was really complicated probably more complicated than i intended to get this morning Okay, so now we are going to switch to a little, uh, I'm going to, no, I take that back. I'm going to use this brush to begin with. I'm going to, you're welcome. I'm going to go in with, what color? Moon Glow. Let's go Moon Glow. I like Moon Glow. We're going to end up with Payne's Gray in here too, but I'm going to take some Moon Glow and I'm going to just mix it with the color that I already had here on the palette, the purpley color. The Moon Glow is a uniquely Daniel Smith color. It is a gray purple. Hey, 
Hey, no problem. You know what? These live watercolor Wednesdays are for questions. That's what I'm here for. So, and if I, like I said, if I miss a question, you guys ask it again. If you need to um, get me later on Facebook, if you're not a member of my Facebook group yet, A Life of Art and Self-Expression, how come? <laughs> go and join and um that's a great place to catch me to answer questions to ask questions um also you can catch me in cindy utters i am group and crazy island family all on facebook um you can find all of my social media links on my website ginabaarons.com and you can find my etsy store by searching uh, by going to my website um, I have fan funding on my YouTube to try to uh, make a little money so that I can keep doing these free live session sessions with you guys. I think my website too also has my email link so you can always email me through the website too. But I think if you go to the contact me page that all of my um, social media links are there. It's either on the contact me page or there's a page for calendars and events. I don't remember, but search around. It's looking interesting. So now I think I want to actually bring in some um, Payne's Gray. Do I want to bring in Payne's Gray? I think I'm, you know, I'm really wanting to bring in some of this color. It's really orange. I know. It's like quit awkward on gold. And I'm actually putting it between the flowers in the background. I'm going to add some water. This is a really warm color. Um, www.ginabaarons.com and I'll spell it for you because nobody gets my last name right. <laughs> um, G-I-N-A B as in boy A-H R-E-N-S And if you Google that name, I should come up a whole bunch of different places. I've been on the internet for a long time, so. I like that. Before we, that's it. Before we do our pop, we have, we're going to dry this because I don't mind if the Payne's Gray mixes a little bit, but I want to be able to control it. So um, I'm going to dry this a little bit. Sure. Do you like it now? Wait till we wait till the next step. So we're not going to dry it completely. We're going to, but we're going to dry it a bit so it's not so wet. It still has some wet spots. So I don't know if you all can see that, but it's still wet in a few places. It's just not as wet as it was a minute ago. So now we're going to go into our Payne's Gray, which is a dark blue gray, and one of my favorite paint colors in both watercolor and acrylic. Okay, and we're going to start out by taking the very tip of our round brush, and this is, by the way, a Royal um, Round number 24. It's kind of a larger round brush, but you can definitely do it with any round brush. And I'm going to barely touch the tip of the brush to the paper. And I'm going to just take some lines. And they're going to, where it's wet, it's going to bleed and blend. But it's not going to do that everywhere. And that's what we want. Okay. Then I'm going to come in with a little bit more Payne's Gray right here in the center. And I'm going to clean my brush off. And I'm going to blend that towards the flower center. 
like that. And that starts to make your flower really pop. Okay, while that dries a bit, we'll do the next one. So again, we're going to pull these out. Don't make them all the same length. You know, it's like when you're doing grass. You want them to be different lengths, some short, some long. So they look less like hair follicles. Payne's gray is such a great color. I totally agree with that statement. It just seems to make everything just pop and shine. It's a great neutral. And when you're painting with bright colors, you really need a neutral to offset those brights and just really make them look more interesting. Now, of course, you could do some of this with pens or markers, but what's the fun in that? We're playing with watercolor paint. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong with that. And if you're doing a mixed media piece and you want to accent your flowers later after it's dry with some um, gel pens or something, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but try it first with the paint and see how far you can get. Okay, so now we're going to do this one. And every time I do these flowers, they come out a little bit differently. But you see what I mean about this dark really making those brights pop. You need to have something, you need to have a good balance of your brights, your darks, and your really lights to make your paintings really pop and come to life. Don't just make them all, you know, the same tone of color. Make sure you add something really dark in there and maybe even something really light in there. And that'll make it really pop. So it does. So now I'm going to take some of my Payne's Gray while those centers are drying and I'm going to use it like I did on this to define some of the petal edges. Now on this one here we have this one petal that's underneath the flower. This petal down here would be pretty dark. So we're going to darken it up with the Payne's Gray, and then that makes the one on top of it really stand out. There would be a shadow here, because this one again is underneath the one on top of it. Now on the original little bookmark, I did more outlining. I don't know if I'm going to do that this time. I, you never, I never know until the end. And there's nothing, you know, wrong with turning your painting around and giving yourself a different perspective. I almost stuck my paintbrush in the wrong color. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, this has a softer look than the bookmark, and I like that. And just like with the rest of the painting so far, you want to work your way from darker to lighter. I mean, lighter to darker. Holy cow. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. Okay, and just keep working your way around your painting. Now remember too, when you're painting with watercolor that you want to um, 
try to, if you want white in your painting, then the best thing to do is try to leave things white. You can go back with like Chinese white and add highlights, which I will probably do on this one before we're done. Um, but you can also just leave part of the paper white. I never seem to manage to do that without using masking fluid, which masks off and protects part of the paper from the paint, so and it doesn't seep underneath. So now I'm just, I'm dipping my paintbrush in the straight paint gray. And I'm just darkening up my petals. And then lifting if I get too much. Now if you find that you want to lift more than the paintbrush is letting you do, don't be afraid to get in there with your rag. And then if you get rag marks, you can always get back in there with the water and on your brush and move it around. Masking fluid is very cool. So after you do your sketch, before you get in here with the paint, you would want to mask off any little parts that you want to try to save as white. And then before I finish my painting, I remove the masking fluid. And then I decide if those white places are in the right place. And that'll be enough. We'll work on that in an upcoming episode. We'll work on mas masking fluid. Okay. So we have that. It's looking, it's looking good. Okay, now I'm going to now switch to a smaller brush. I think we're done with the big brush, at least for right now. We may come in and I may do something a little extra on here other than I did on the original. Um, I'm going to grab a Princeton Select. This is a round number four. It's a much smaller brush. And I'm going to, uh, we're going to stick with the paint gray. Uh, but I want to dry this a little bit. Um, the original brush was a Royal um, watercolor brush. This is a round number 24. It's a fairly large brush. And it's a fairly cheap brush. I think I got it at Tuesday morning in a set. You're welcome. Yeah, you know, your brushes don't have to be expensive. They also don't have to be natural bristle brushes. I actually prefer synthetic. You can, definitely. You can lift with a rag. Um, you can also, you know, instead of drying it quick like I'm doing, you can, uh, you know, put some salt in the flower centers and let it dry naturally. And that'll give your painting some, your flower centers some texture. <laughs> my paintings for the most part tend to come out pretty colorful and pretty dark but you definitely don't have to do that you could do more pastel um, you still are going to want a pop of something dark and or light and neutrals you're going to want some neutrals even if you stay with a mostly lighter color palette I, I prefer a larger brush for a lot of things, but I have lots of brushes because I, you know, like paint colors. <laughs> I like brushes. I got to stop going to the store when there's paintbrush sales. My favorite brand are the Princeton Select, which are the blue handled brushes. 
they're not a super expensive brush. I do have a couple of those though, but they're really expensive. I have one. Is it this one? No, uh, no not that one. I have one that's really expensive. It was like $65 for one paintbrush. Oh, this one. Nope, not that one. I don't know. It's in here somewhere. Oh, here. <sighs> Raphael Soft Aqua. This brush, this little brush is really expensive. <laughs> and it's a natural bristle brush, and I love it for doing washes because it, it is natural bristle, bristle. It holds a lot of water, and you can go real far with it without re-dipping it in the water. Um, but the bristles also get very soft and floppy, and the... Um, synthetic bristles don't really do that, so I think that's why I like them better. I like a stiffer brush. Yeah, exactly. Large would help you get loose. So now that we have that mostly dry, we're going to go back in again to our flower. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm and, I, and I'm going right into the Payne's Gray straight. Um, I'm not watering it down or anything. And I'm going to just do, I'm going to tap my brush around the flower. and put little dots. Yep. Then we're gonna rinse our brush off and I'm going to take some more of the Payne's Gray. And with this smaller brush, I'm going to pull out some more lines. And they'll be darker because this paint now is not watered down. I'm using it straight out of the pan. Then I'm going to take some more of the paint and I'm going to go around the flower center and then I'm going to take some plain water and I'm going to blend. There we go. And look at how that makes that just totally pop. So let's do that to the other ones. And when you do that, now you have the edge is dark. The center is lighter, so now it starts to look at least 2D, if not 3D, right? So we'll do our dots. And we're not, I'm not changing colors, I'm still using the Payne's Gray. Now you could you do some of these techniques to do sunflowers. Roses. It did, they don't even have to be a real flower. It could be, you know, something made up out of your imagination. And this probably won't be the last time we do flowers because there is a million and one, if not more, ways to do flowers. <clears throat> And I happen to like painting flowers. Sunflowers are fun. So I do recommend that if you are in my Facebook group, go into the document that Jerry Bellini created, one of the admins, for Watercolor Wednesday, and she puts suggestions. They're basically their suggestions for an upcoming schedule. Um, so if there's something in particular you want to see, go add it to the schedule, and that's what we'll work on. Yeah, you could totally do butterflies this way, and I have done. Uh, on an old Watercolor Wednesday, I did a butterfly. There's a Watercolor Wednesday playlist on YouTube. 
So now I'm going in with the Payne's Gray and the Littler brush and I'm just, I'm defining some of those petals some more. I'm really making them pop and stand out from one another. And I'm painting this one and pulling this one out by creating space around it, painting around it and pulling it out by painting the space behind it, which is another technique and I've done whole flowers that way. Okay. Don't be afraid to turn your paper around to give you a different perspective. You don't have to outline the whole paper like right here, like what I did on the bookmark. I just out put it on a little bit of it and I'm going to come in and blend that line just a little bit with some water. Oh, thank you. That's actually a clock. That we've actually fixed a few times because we um, are hesitant to get rid of it when it's broken because it was a wedding present from my in-laws and my father-in-law is no longer with us so it's got some sentimental value I've gotten used to it people come to spend the night and they're like what is that dang noise I'm like oh sorry that's the clock <laughs> So you don't have to blend all the lines. You can just do blend some of them and you can add some little lines and dashes to the edges of your flowers to help define them. And then you can come in and you can just blend some of them. Leaving your brush marks gives your painting some interest. And I'm kind of making a wiggly, ruffly edge around some of my flower petals where they're a little bit too straight and flat. And it really makes them start to pop. Exactly. So now those yellows and oranges look like sun hitting the flowers, right? And that's what we wanted. So when you're doing this and you're adding the darker colors, don't add the darker colors into a spot that's already got some, you know, that's already got light, that's light on the petal um, without some thought. Um, keep your darks darks and your lights lights. At this point, you know, like right here is a dark side of the petal, so I'm going to add it here. But I'm not going to add it right here because I want that to stay light and bright. I don't know if any of that made sense. It did in my head. I'm going to show you in a minute how to, we're going to suggest some leaves on here. I would love it if you guys share what you do from today's lesson in the Facebook group. I'd love to see it. I know so would everybody else. Okay, I'm glad it made sense to somebody <laughs> besides just me. I could just go to town here all day with the Payne's Gray. Can you tell? No, don't outline. Don't don't outline the whole thing. Just, you know, the areas of your petal that are already, you know, darker, because that's where the darker paint landed, that's what you want to really define with the dark paints gray paint. Try to avoid using black because it's not as interesting. And try to avoid blending all the marks. Like right there, you know, I added these marks. I didn't I didn't blend them. And I like that way that that's looking. So I'm not going to blend them and I'm going to leave it. Now I'm going to show you. We're going to go back to the bigger brush and we're going to pick a green and I'm going to start out with green gold, which is a very yellowy green here. And I prefer, I prefer yellowy greens. That's my preference. If you make me choose one, I always go for sap green or yellowy green. And I am going to 
suggest some leaves. So I'm going to pick some spots on here to lay down some green color. You know, like with anything else, I prefer to do things in threes. So we're going to do that. Then I'm going to rinse my brush off and grab some water. And I'm going to pull those out, pull that green out. I'm going to also pull it in between the petals if it's appropriate. And we're doing a suggestion of a petal, a uh, leaf. We're not doing an actual leaf. So I want you to remember that. Don't be afraid to come in here and, you know, make your green uh, have some dark tones and some light tones by doing some lifting. And then now we're going to go in with a darker green. So I've got Cascade Green, which is a very blue green. This is Cascade Green. It's almost like an evergreen Christmas tree color. And we're going to lay that in. And then we're going to take some water and we're going to push it around. Okay, then we're going to take some of our original color we started with. Oh, maybe not. No, we're going to go with Solidite. So you could go back with the Cobalt Blue Violet, but I think I'm going to go with Solidite, which is a sort of a Payne's Gray type color. It's a lot bluer. And it's right next to the Cobalt Blue Violet. I'm going to lay some of that in and then just like with everything else I'm going to pull it out push it around don't be afraid to do this either you get some fun splatters and marks <laughs> and that you suggested some greenery there with your flowers the other thing that's fun to do is take some of one of your greens and really you could do this with any color and and Splatter some on, and you know, I'm not too concerned if I get some in the wrong spot. I'm going to just lift it a little bit. Those dots will still be there, but they'll be less noticeable. If you're really concerned about it, cover your flowers up first before you do that. Um, I'm wanting to go in here with a little bit of um, these. I do want to... Oops. Yeah. Oops. And this is the solidite color. This is the really dark solidite color. Some really dark splatters. 
something like that. Now I got paint all over my color key. <laughs> so something like that. Play with it and have fun and don't be afraid to make it splattery and messy. And um, now we want to go this way. There we go. So don't be afraid to make it splattery and messy and have fun with it. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? This is how I did this one. Um, basically the same colors too, I think. Thank you. And these definitely could be scanned and you could, um, you know, use it as an element in a journal page. Um, you could use it as a bookmark. You could use it as a greeting card cover. Um, I am, like I said, scanning these and putting them as a digital download in my Etsy shop. So, But I encourage you guys to go out there and play and just, you know, do. you don't have to do something this big. Do a bookmark. These little bookmarks are fun. Now this one I did using the same techniques. Only instead of painting the flower the way that we did, I painted around the flower, around the outside, um, to bring out the flower. And I didn't paint the center of the flower until the end, after I'd done this all this background work. You definitely could take these flowers and you could um, take a little bit of your Chinese white. I didn't do this in the original. Oh, I just stuck my... My brush was dirty, and now my Chinese white is dirty. Let's clean it up a little bit. <laughs> so you definitely could take some of the Chinese white and you could, you know, add it as a highlight. You know, bring bring in some highlights. You could also do this with a gel pen. I like the idea of using the Chinese white though, because when it dries, it's it it looks it looks more like paint. And you all know, somebody asked me recently, you know, when do you know when a painting is done? And I told them um, when I either varnish it or it goes to its forever home, because otherwise I'm tempted to forever play with them. <laughs> Which is the truth. It's still soft. That's the thing I like about the Chinese white. It's still soft. Um... You could also use like um, white gouache, which is a water soluble, uh, like watercolor paint, but it's more um, opaque than your watercolor is more transparent. You're welcome. So play and have some fun and make some flowers. Don't forget to go into um, the Facebook group and upload update the document with other things that you guys like to see, like somebody suggested sunflowers. I don't know if you guys want to do roses, um, um, other kind of flowers, or whatever you would like to see, butterflies or whatever. And um, add them to the schedule every single Wednesday. As long as I am not out of town or something, we will be here. And I will see you all later. Have a great day. And this will be up on YouTube within like 48 hours. The name of the Facebook group is A Life of Art and Self-Expression. And you can um, also find information about me on GinaBAarons.com. Um, do I have a pen? I have a pen. Hang on. So that is the way you spell my name. If you Google this name, a whole bunch of stuff is going to come up, <laughs> including my website and other things. And the name of the group, again, is A Life of Art and Self-Expression. We have a document for Watercolor Wednesdays. You can add your suggestions to the list with the next Wednesday date, and we will um, be going by the list going forward. And every time that we do one of these, I'll try to bring something new to the table. Like today, we did the initial sketch with the water-soluble pencils. And um, every week, I'll we'll try to bring something new like that to the table. And uh, I'd love to see what you guys make. And if you have any questions, you can tag me in the group. 
or you can um, email me um, from the website and uh, we'll take it from there. Have a great day, everybody. Don't forget to do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later.